I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi and this is the third video in my Carcassonne Endgame series. A series of puzzle videos in which each video illustrates an important theoretical concept about competitive Carcassonne and gameplay. This position is a bit trickier than the first two positions we looked at. Forget the screen name, so we're playing Red. We're playing as Hans George here, and we're trying to win against Alexei. So we are four points ahead on the scoreboard, and we have one meeple, and we need to place this T-shaped crossroads. Possibly you could solve this without hints, but of course, because it's a complicated situation, I will be giving more hints than usual. But if you want to solve it without hints, pause the video. I'm going to keep talking in three, two, one. The first hint, as usual, is position assessment, which in this situation is pretty easy because there are just so many shared features. Shared ruin doesn't matter. Two monasteries that cancel each other. Shared ruin again and a shared field. Uh, it's worth a lot of points and could be decisive, but... Currently, it's worth net zero points because yellow has three meeples on it and red has three meeples on it. The only asymmetry in the position is this 12-point ruin right here. And that's why yellow's meeple is so busy building it, because it's worth a lot of points. And then this means that things are not looking so great for us. Four points ahead on the scoreboard, minus 12 for the ruin. So red is now at minus eight. See if this information factors into your decision somehow. If it does, great. If not, I'm gonna keep talking in three, two, one. The next hint is not going to be the remaining tiles just yet. It is actually going to be the desired outcome. I'm gonna say to you that we cannot win this game no matter what. Assuming that yellow finds the best move on their move, which they will. But we can hope for a tie. There's a 50-50 shot for a tie, and there's only one move that gives you that. See if this information is helpful, but if not, I'm gonna give you the next, th the next hint in 3, 2, 1. The remaining tiles are a straight line and a starting tile. So this is actually pretty interesting. I assume that many of you thought that the potential move has to do something with the field, but with the remaining tiles, you can see that there is actually no entry to the field. And if you go here, up top, you can drop a farmer, but you cannot connect it because there are simply no curves remaining. The question is, what else do you do? See if this information is helpful to you somewhat and I'm gonna keep talking in three two one the next hint that I'm going to reveal is our source of victory if we can't score eight or more points with the field and we can't connect to any other features because there are no city connections there are no road connections not anything there is one feature that can give us eight points potentially and this is this empty city on the right if we get a starting tile on our next move, then we will be able to score eight points and win it. But the question is, how do we guarantee that in case we draw the starting tile, the city will be still available to score eight points? I hope I've given you enough hints uh, already, but in case not, I will reveal the actual answer in three, two, one. And the answer is, you take the T-shaped crossroads and you put it over here on the right to protect the empty city. Because what's yellow going to do on their move unless you do that? Yellow is going to place a straight line and place it to block that city so that you don't take the eight points. And in fact, if you're wondering how these features appeared on board before, uh, the way this works is, first of all, Red started pre-building the city in the hopes that a city cap comes and they get 8 points. Yellow, on the other hand, recognized that. And with this straight line, uh, which he placed to move after, 
created a blocking platform so that in case they draw a straight line, they put it like this and then they block the city. And so here as red, you had to recognize all that and save the city and hope for eight points on your last move. Of course, some of you might be thinking that you could just score two or three points, uh, maybe you know, for this road on the left here, for example, and then hope to save the city. But you cannot assume that your opponent is going to just miss a city like this and fail to block that. So you have to protect the city and hope for the 50-50 and hope that you win. And the theoretical concept I wanted to illustrate today is actually three concepts bundled together that have all something to do with meepleless play. It's pre-building, pre-blocking, and pre-defending. Or playing around a feature before either side places a meeple on it. In case you did not find the move in the puzzle, or you are in general not familiar with meepleless play, then there is a simple rule that can make it much easier for you. If you don't have meeples, treat any meepleless features as if they were your opponents. If you have meeples and your opponent doesn't, treat meepleless features like your own. If you have meeples and your opponent doesn't have meeples, then you can build up empty features in order to claim them as and when you get the tile to complete them. And you can do that without an investment of a meeple because your opponent doesn't have a meeple, your opponent is not going to take away from them. And if your opponent is trying to block the features, you can defend them so that there are still tiles available to complete them if you get such a tile. And if you're the side without meeples, then if your opponent st starts building empty features, it's best for you either to complete them so that your opponent doesn't claim them or to block them also so that your opponent doesn't claim them. So basically all the things that you would normally do if your opponent had a meeple on that feature already. Meepleless play is an underexplored area of competitive Carcassonne and we will be getting deeper into that in future videos, but that's going to be it for today. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to meeple the like button and subscribe to this channel for more Carcassonne puzzles. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you soon.